was some nasty now. <laughs> that was beyond nasty. That was filthy. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. And hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey guys, good day to you all. How's it going? My name is Sean David and I welcome you back to the basketball time machine, your NBA old school show. In today's episode, I want to, for the first time, take a look at NBA legends talking about Manu Ginobili, a player that even we old school fans, and even though he has retired for a couple of years, I have the feeling that, yeah, we got to give this guy a little bit more respect because he was one of the purest basketball players of the 2000s. So in this video, we're going to take a look at NBA legends talking about Manu. But before we start with that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. If you're new to the show, please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, you guys, let's go for it. Now the first player's opinion that I want to take a look at is from Dirk Nowitzki and Tim Duncan, obviously a former teammate, two players that had, yeah, quite a few, not only run-ins, because I know that Manu was not easy in practice, but also had good relationships with Manu Ginobili. He was doing all the little things. When the game was on the line, he was there making big shots. Here's Ginobili for three. Making big plays on both ends of the floor. You have no choice but to enjoy playing with someone like that. Someone who has such a high basketball IQ, has such a high competitive nature, who's out there just to win. Feeds it to Tim at the buzzer, packed it in! And the next player's opinion that I want to take a look at is from Scottie Pippen, a player who just like Manu Ginobili also had to sacrifice a lot during his NBA days. So let's take a look what Scottie has to say on the jump. Scottie. I saw your face over there. He sacrificed for this team. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a sacrifice. So sacrifice might have been too much. <laughs> he gave up a lot. Right? <laughs> he also gave up that starter's role. Yes. Also. I mean, he was a starter on the team. He was he was not on the on the border. He was definitely starter level. Can you imagine them coming to you and saying, oh, we actually just think you'll give us a little more off the bench? You know what? That just goes to tell you that the game is bigger than any individual. And him using this as an example, coming off the bench, sacrificing, not being an all-star for mm -hmm. years, uh, just giving up that superstar role completely and sacrificing for the benefit of the San Antonio Spurs, the championships that they've won. Um, you know, when you win, good things come out of it. Mm -hmm. And this is a prime example of a guy that believed in it. His list is his list. You're the most exciting European player that I've seen. Period. So forget his list. <laughs> Period or <laughs> just in terms Period. of that? The most exciting. Even pay, uh, Mo wait, the most wait, wait. exciting. What about Petrovic? The most exciting. Petrovic? The most exciting. Petrovic I could score, oh, yeah, but he jump. wasn't exciting. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. The most exciting. Who you seen dunk like this man here? Uh, on somebody. Hasn't met 20%. But that's hot garbage, isn't it, Jalen? <laughs> uh, because he is for sure going into the Hall of Fame, isn't he? And a lot of people take for granted this the Basketball Hall of Fame. So it's the totality of everything he's accomplished, in particular his international experience. So I definitely, based on that belief, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Would you, if you had to name best six man over the, over the course of the years, where would you put him? He's in the conversation. Um, Jamal Crawford has won the award three times. Manu Ginobili's been in a different position because Pops keeps the minutes down during the regular season. You know this better than anyone. But at the moments where he's come up big, it made me write down a couple. And I wanted to recall as All a right. Spurs fan Let me hear it. what you think of or oh, what, what you were of. doing when these plays happened. Oh, wow. How about in 2005, okay. Game 7, Detroit Pistons, uh -huh. Manu scored 11 of his 23 points. I love it, I love it. In the it. fourth quarter. You yep, remember that yep, one? Yep, 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 go on. Okay, what, about, like the, what about the block on James Harden? That was a, because everyone, you know, he's old man Ginobili. People didn't think he still had it in him, and he still had it in him. What about the dunk on Chris Bosh? 
Uh, that's just a, a mismatch in size that makes everybody root for the <laughs> underdog. So, of course, yeah. Game winner gets the Golden State Warriors 2013 Western Conference playoffs. Do you have my favorite one on there? I mean, it's basically the whole game, but it's 2014 Game 5. That was the one where I think I lost my mind in a, by the way, 100% sober. Lost <laughs> my mind. I had never been so excited to see anything in my entire life. This game, you know, this Spurs team was fueled that year off of the bad taste left in their mouth from the year before and the Ray Allen three and everything that went down there. And then this, uh, it is just, we watched this guy. Look, I, there, yep, I, I'm literally <laughs> losing my mind. Like, <laughs> I was not lying about that. Um, it, he, I feel like he entered San Antonio almost as if he was already a vet leader. Mm -hmm. He leaves as one of the all-time fan favorites. He's established such a great place for himself in that community. I, they, it's hard to name guys that they've loved more. He is definitely on that short list of guys that fans have genuinely cared for at the course of his career, and I'm stoked. They've added the Argentine player, Nanu. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this Ginobili. I'm anxious to see what the guys we've added can do. Manu Ginobili. Supposedly he's, he's a great find. He's, he's the best player in Europe, supposedly. Manu, he was an uncommon competitor, you know, when, when he arrived. And already very accomplished. You may recall him from this past summer when he led the Argentinian national basketball team at the World Basketball Championships that beat the USA. Everybody knew who Manu was. He was the best player overseas. So I was just excited to get him here. I said, Timmy, you're gonna really like this guy. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. He walks up to me, he's like, hey, Manu Ginobili, I'm with the Spurs. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed he was another one of the Experiments? Yeah, experiments <laughs> that I would never meet. <laughs> Manu, what did you just tell him to do? And what did I tell the team we're in to start the quarter? That's, that's your problem. I remember first year you were here, when we practiced, you'd have to play against Bruce a lot. And Bruce used to beat the absolute crap out of you. That's when I kind of started believing or started seeing that he had something that he was he was as good as advertised. Not that I didn't understand it, but it frustrated me like saying, what the hell, is he's, he's my teammate. Yeah. So he challenged me and it was it was funny, it made me better. At some point in that first year, I said, why do you do that? Why? What are you what are you? He goes, my mother, this is what I do. And from that day on, we pretty much let him do what he does. Keep shooting. Keep shooting it, keep shooting it, follow through, follow through. Be brave, be aggressive. So he taught me to be a little bit more patient, to widen my horizons, think out of the box a little bit more. Uh, and it was great. We went through so many things in so many years. Always being old. It seems <laughs> like everybody always calls us vets. But I think we always competed with class. But it's hard to tell what, what I'll remember, besides the, the situation so unique before so many years with the same coach and all that. And I, and I think that togetherness uh, is what I'll remember. Doesn't necessarily capture his impact. He was only twice an All-Star, never averaged 20 points. The highest he ever got was third team All-NBA, but a crucial part of four championship teams who played a style that no one has replicated. Well, if, if you add in, obviously, Matt, we talk about his international experience, right. but the Hall of Fame takes into account uh, Manu Ginobili, uh, for sure a Hall of Famer, but it's the role that Manu played and accepted in San Antonio that's you know, one of the more spectacular parts about his career, to have that kind of production for that long and to be that consistent. Uh, El Contusion, as, as I, I called him back <laughs> yeah. in San Antonio, uh, deserving of a Hall of Fame induction. And certainly deserving, Matt, of all the praise from all the players over the past couple of days who've reached out via social media and let Manu know just how much of an inspiration as a player he was, how much of a pleasure it was to compete against him. But you saw a lot of international younger players say, you're the reason why I dreamt that it was possible for me to have the opportunity to play in the NBA. You know the thing with Manu Ginobili is, and I got to be honest to you guys, 
it took me a while to really appreciate him because obviously I lost, I don't want to say I lost interest in the NBA after the 2000s, but it got less and less over the years. And because he played in an era where basketball became more the game that it is nowadays, I had, I had, it took me a while to appreciate the few guys that still play basketball the right way. There was a Tim Duncan, there was a Manu Ginobili, there was a Dirk Nowitzki. There were still guys that I could really appreciate, but it took me a while. And I gotta be honest, Manu Ginobili to me is one of the greatest players of the 2000s. And even though I don't believe that he would ever have been a super, super, superstar, the guy had a phenomenal game. He had a huge back. He played really competitive. He wanted to win. He was a team player. He sacrificed a lot. And if you like basketball, pure basketball, you got to give the guy respect. So this is what I wanted to do in this episode. Let me know in the comments below how you think about Manu Ginobili. And hopefully, I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.